maybe just a bit of background on Building Regen Alliance is this group here has been uh, working tirelessly to set up this whole event, so thank you, everybody. Um, and part of what we realized is there's kind of a lot of collaboration, officially and unofficially, as our respective groups and beyond. So with Gitcoin, Shelling Point, 50 years. Um, and we saw it was, in some ways it was uh, kind of organizing itself, but also it's kind of had these informal structures and we find ourselves bringing more and more people into the fold. So the idea is here we just wanted to explore a little bit more about, you know, what does it mean to build a Regen Alliance? and um, get some of the major players that we've been working with so far um, all in one room and just have a little bit of a conversation here. So, unfortunately, I didn't memorize my notes ahead of time, so I'm going to be rude and read off my phone. Um, but I'll lead off to our Steam panel here and say, you know, what does a Regen Alliance mean? So, like, why do we need to bring together the community like this for events, for discussions, formally and informally? And I'll kick it off with Simona, because I, I know you have some, some interesting points on this. Um, so, hi everybody. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it's incredibly, incredibly important to create these spaces because um, you want to have this opportunity to bring a lot of people who are very value aligned together um, and encourage and facilitate and hold space for these conversations to happen and for us to collectively come up with the next steps and the next action points and the uh, you know, the, the plan for what it is that we're all doing here. And with events like Funding the Commons, with events like Shelling Point, um, we really are facilitating that conversation and elevating that conversation over all of the other, potentially, all the other threads that are a little bit more extractive, that are a little bit more superficial when it comes to Web3, that are a little bit, just let's face it, pointless. Um, um, because it's important to, to have that value and maintain that value and encourage everybody to add to that value. Every perspective matters. This is how we all move uh, forward and we move forward together. Yeah, I'd maybe just add, I think we're sort of in this interesting environment where everything that we do together actually adds to the sort of like collective intelligence and overall sort of flourishing of Web3. And I think in traditional sort of institutions, that's not really the case. If you're part of a company, you're kind of like in your own little ecosystem. You have, you know, maybe like a little networking thing with like another company, but you don't really have like a direct connection or partnership or like really embedded sort of relationship with other groups. And I think in Web3, that's very much not the case. I think you, you naturally have a lot of kind of positive some games to be played. And by that, what I mean is that if you do something in, you know, actually this is true, I would say even in open source, but the aligned incentives of sort of Web3, I think, give more credence to this. Um, if you have basically an open source project, you have something that you're working on in Web3, by doing that, you're actually giving other people in the ecosystem new tools, new kind of conversation, new ideas that they didn't have before that they weren't able to execute on before. And that's kind of like the money Legos conversation in DeFi as well, but I think it's especially important in sort of the regenerative economic space because we have these massive global scale problems and I think the idea that you can just have one institution solving those things on their own is, is probably not realistic in the face of these kinds of challenges. So I think to me it's one, just a natural way of, you know, Web3 kind of enabling this coordination across organizations that didn't exist in Web2. But in addition, I think it's also a question of how do you actually you know, why is it important in regen and, and why is it important to focus on this particular space when we are thinking about those alliances? Um, yeah, I was going to say that very similar same thing that I think that it's important for us to build as an ecosystem because Web3 is inherently interoperable and you can actually take some of the um, strategies, mechanisms that someone did and implement it on your own, but also just like very, very like symbiotic. So um, organizations that are like, as we were mentioning, like the region alliance, if one is particularly good at one thing and then the other one has another expertise, we're, we don't need to actually like develop those expertise. We can just partner together and uh, achieve like collective good while also making sure that we have the aligned incentives towards like building the ecosystem and building for each other. So it's more about like how we do we become enablers for others in the ecosystem than like how do we optimize for our own strategy and i would say that part of like um coming together and sharing and, and things like that it is very much 
I see it across the whole spectrum of, of region and Web3 and in general, these new mechanism designs, both at like Twitter spaces and like uh, sharing things, but also in, in conferences and in like very intentional kind of retreats or groups that are constantly just like building together and sharing, which that's like the main um, reason why the group exists. And I think that's something we want to create here. It, so I, I agree with all that. And I think it's, you know, from, I, I guess, uh, the perspective of what we've been working on in Protocol Labs a bit too, is it's a bit of, you know, finding a, a place for information dispersion within the community, I think is just so critical because there is like, um, you know, there's, an there's a tremendous opportunity, I think, to accelerate the development of this space, whether that's by community, whether that's by mechanism design, all the things we're doing here, by just bringing a bunch of people together. I feel like there's a lot of isolated approaches to kind of solving very similar problems, which, you know, as we kind of explore the search space uh, for ourselves of how are we going to solve some of like the fundamental public goods, network goods type problems within our, you know, for ourselves, turns out there's a lot of people who have been spending a lot of time working on this within the Web3 community. The, you know, the research and the economics community has, has been looking at these coordination problems for a very, very long time. So I think it's, for us, what I think is so valuable is just like understanding and like compressing the search time it takes to find these problems that um, others have spent a lot of time and have very unique approaches on and like help bring it into to ourselves. So in that in that sense, I think it's like, it's very much like we, you know, we, we don't want to reinvent the wheel and we also want to um, be able to like pull all these threads in uh, versus like trying to search for ourselves. So, and I think it, by bringing all these people together, it also creates a lot of resiliency, um, which, you know, I'm, I'm curious, Simona, what you think about, you know, how do we kind of install resiliency and like a, build a good foundation for this movement um, as we go forward, especially, you know, given, um, you know, everything that's going on right now in the markets, um, everything that's been happening lately in the world. Um, I would definitely say that it's so rooted in the energy that we all share and we chatted about this before where I don't think this alliance, like it's not a formal thing, but it's a thread that keeps us together and pulls us together. And it's a testament for a lot of us who have been in this ecosystem for a very long time and we are very tired, but we continue doing it because we genuinely feel compelled to, because we believe, because we're surrounded by people who also believe, who are um, you know, uh, uh, trying to keep that energy going and trying to keep that momentum going because really what matters is to push this type of conversation forward, push this type of uh, dynamic forward uh, versus just letting all of the extractive things bubble up to the surface, which as we know and as we've seen time and time again, do run out of steam, right? And they just like drop off and then there's nothing. So. It's, I would say that it is that connection between us all and that belief and that alignment that we have to ensure is protected and is maintained, which is why we have these events, which is why we have these conversations, which is why we come together when we do, which is why we must maintain these conversations and like expand them and add more and more perspectives to it because that is what keeps us together. Um, and that is what keeps that collective energy um, you know, and hopefully fuels us for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think especially in, in this sort of like market, there's a lot of need for people to be thinking about like, how are you actually coming together around different initiatives and, and working together? Um, because ultimately, you know, w there's kind of a, th I actually, so I, I mean, we, we all sort of like went through like the um, like 2018 like bear market and I actually think that those were like some of my fondest memories because like that was really like uh, it instilled that sense of like camaraderie and it gave you kind of that reflection, that, like the period of reflection around the fact that you're doing this for intrinsic reasons, not because of like any kind of like extrinsic motivation. And I think that's always stronger. I think you can have both. It's, it's always stronger to have some degree of intrinsic motivation. Um, but to your point, Matthew, before, I think what's what's really important is just like so yeah, like I, I kind of mentioned this before, but it's, it's so often we get caught in these local maxima and like we don't really have a good way to like once we're in that sort of like, you know, on that like kind of like peak getting off of it and finding the next sort of like part of that search space. We just get like caught. And I think by having these kinds of um, like shelling points, no pun intended, like I think this is actually a way to produce like a kind of just 
a, almost a force that pushes you off of that hill and forces you to go back to the search space and go back to this sort of like exploration phase. Um, and I just think that's super important. And I think one, you know, to follow up on, on both your points here, you know, one of the things that we've kind of installed as a mission to fund the commons in terms of community is how do we bring together these different communities um, that may exist outside of Web3? So, you know, traditional researchers, institutional investors, academics, to all kind of understand the shape of the problem and understand that we're actually, there's a lot of, you know, ingrained knowledge out there that matches to the work that we're doing. And one of the things that we've noticed, you know, we have some great speakers, uh, you know, Sarah Horowitz, for example, earlier, um, comes from almost a non-traditional Web3 background. And there's a lot of this, understanding Web3, understanding public goods and regenerative finance and onboarding into the ecosystem and the community. And, you know, I'll start with Simona. You know, talk to me a little bit about, we had discussions about what it means to really have a core set of onboarding. Like, what are the things that need to be imparted to people coming into the community and how do we bring them into this, like, this mission that we're trying to create here? Um, I, and, and I've said this before and I do, um, again, through, throughout the years, it, it has become more and more apparent just how important it is there needs to be this process of initiation um, into something because when, when I arrived in this ecosystem, the main thing that I remember having is this incredible sense of humility and awe and being in the presence of this technology that for the first time in such a long time you have this stack that is so prone to anything, to innovation, to change. And it was excitement but humility and also just like so so careful to make sure that we use it for the right stuff and i think as you get um flashy things and as you get extractive behaviors coming in people get distracted from having that humility and that excitement and that care about what you're using it for and it's powerful stuff and you know, the, w the opportunity that we have, we really shouldn't squander. And it's a very fine line to instill that in people coming in. That this is, with great power comes great responsibility. The fact that you need to be mindful, the fact that maybe you need to elevate your intentions when you do build something, the fact that you should focus on impact and redefine value that way, not dollar bill signs. Like, let's, let's do a little bit better. Like we've, we've been at a plateau for so long. This is an opportunity for us all to just like take a step up or forward or whatever. Um, yeah, just turning on that, um, I th that was the same thing when I just came to Web3, which is much later. Uh, I saw like we have this tool set to encode like our visions and our like whatever we want to create, but this tool and this technology, they can be like can go like anywhere. And it is about like making sure that while we're still kind of like very early and we still have like a great design space to like engineer these token incentives or these like coordination mechanisms or different things, is like how do we also make sure that everyone who is also very much driven for impact, for good, for like new thinking is also onboarded here and like thinking together. So I I a bit more like from the personal side, for example, I'm really excited about like technology and like coordination systems and economics, but I'm also really excited about health, about uh, going to like natural areas, to indigenous wisdom, to like philosophy, stuff like that. And I feel like when I got into this space, like it was one, one of the few places where you when you can actually come and bring your whole experience and your whole self to it. Uh, and I, I think it, that is something that a lot of people have felt. and. Uh, and a lot of like just the conversations have from people having experience with like I, I remember one Git Coin Public Goods it was about magic and it was Sarah telling her about her experiences and like so everyone was like bringing their own expertise and I think that's what this is about as well like everyone coming from their own research and their own uh, area and one final thing is like I think of it as like when you come together and you bring in your like Lego blocks, like you could either bring like a already structured house and like put it to the table and then once you go back after the conference, you just saw their houses and like take it back or you can bring your, the pieces of knowledge and the expertise that made up that Lego house and you bring only the Lego pieces and they, you co collectively can like create something together. And once you leave, you actually need that 
Lego piece from someone else, that piece of knowledge to create that vision. So that's how I like to see like kind of like this world. I was just gonna um, add a, a little angle here, and again, we've spoken about this before, but I really love that idea of bringing your whole self into it, and I think that's why for a lot of us, you finally feel comfortable. And I don't know if anybody here feels that way, but I remember just feeling finally comfortable with everything that I had to share that, mm, you know, I was thinking about the fact that I could vibe with people, share uh, share knowledge and thoughts and ideas with people and then we would create something new together. And it, uh, the distinction that I kind of make is for such a long time we've been like one dimensional versions of ourselves that we bring to the thing and now we can be like the full 3D model. And it feels very good. Like, mm -hmm. and that, and how do you capture that and how do you um, make sure that you allow people to feel comfortable because we've been so restricted for so long that we just feel like we need permission to do it. And this, Web3, in my opinion, it gives you that space to become 3D versus like a sheet of paper. Yeah, Andy's had hope from Kernel just released um, a piece called Signature Economies, which actually like talks a little bit about this this idea of you know what are we actually doing when we're interacting with like anything Web three? We're we're kind of creating our own sort of maps of meaning by signing two things that actually are important to us that matter to us. We're like showcasing that in actions by interacting with the system that we're building, and that's something that I think. Um, you know, allows us to to do that kind of like bringing our whole selves sort of um, mentality to what we're up to because we all understand that this stuff is it is in public. It is you know uh, tied to our personhood. Um, we had you know Pooja and others talking about some of this um, and, and models for this earlier. But I think um, the one thing I, I really want to highlight, just in addition to that, is just that the the sort of kernel community, which which Andy and Vivek started, is really about communities of care, and and it's because there is that care that I think people feel comfortable in the first place, and that's what I think was missing from previous like sort of institutions. So I I think this is like super important and like super critical. I also want to potentially like throw a little bit of a wrench or challenge in here as well, just to just to see. So I think there's, you know, part of what we talk about with mechanism design is kind of like how do we rewrite the fundamentals in our previous talk by Allah is, you know, that I think like the community is incredibly important. And I think there's all, but I think it's like, how do you bring this community and this like bring your whole self? And how do you merge that and have the right discussions and discourse around things about like, well, there is a financialization aspect. There is a fact that like if we, you know, scalable, scalably, scalably redefining value flows um, in an end state to be able to like fund the things that we are important, that we think are incredibly important does require at least a, you know, acknowledgement of like some of the limitations when it comes to like the financial system, some of the, you know, the realities of the funding and like how it needs to be regenerative over time. Um, I'm curious, how do you think, cause like I, you know, for, for some of the work that our team has done, we're like very, almost two in our heads about, you know, how do we make the financial and like the mechanism design stuff work? And then like also, the, but the community is incredibly powerful to basically, you know, help with the allocation, help with the, you know, the longer term vision, help bringing people together to solve this like mechanism design problem in some ways is like, is, is how we would, we would think about that in, cer in certain ways. How do you, think about balancing this need for having, you know, innately being in a like financial value driven market um, of like funding public goods with this maintaining, you know, the goodwill, the ability to bring your whole self to this community, um, the need to kind of like keep ourselves oriented and our, you know, understand what's important that may not be financialized um, in some ways. Like, does that mean that we just acknowledge that there are some areas where we won't be as economically as efficient or is that we need to focus on the mechanism design and build all of this in, um, but understand that they may take longer and we need to rely on the community to backstop some of that. Mm, um, I, I can take on that um, first. I think there's two things that resonated. One was uh, the balance between being in our heads, designing those mechanisms versus actually like doing the, whatever we are funding and whatever those mechanisms are like meant to create in the world. I think that's actually a good balance I got from like working directly with founders and like teams at 50 years that are cre using these funding models to create change while creating all those like more mechanism design like through the web three thinking. But also like I even had this like moment, like I went to Costa Rica like two weeks ago and it was like this concept of like 
we're building this sort of solar punk narrative and solar punk futures of region uh, regeneration like natural bank economies and i was like i want to actually like experience a little bit of that so i literally went to costa rica to like be in one of those villages and the communities to see one snippet of that but i think another uh, part of that like of the balance between different ways. I think it's actually the plurality and the interoperability. Like for example, Gitcoin Grants 2.0 will hold like a many different ways to funding party goods or caring for the economy. I know that like Anna, for example, she's like there from Celo. Uh, like Celo has like different ways to um, like care, f like to enable people who were usually not, did not have access to transacting value. Now they can actually do so just with their smartphones because of their Valora app or other things. And the same way they're implementing digital backed currencies and different things. The same way that, for example, Radical Drips is e experimenting with like uh, different flows of money, like more like everyone who finds benefit from something can start like a subscription towards that. And one final thing there would be like with this concept of like building together and building like an ecosystem, it allows us to create these mechanism designs um, and then implement them in different communities within Web3 or within uh, real life. So for example, talking engineering commons, having like these different ways of like very, like we can use those tools, but then adjust the details towards the, um, econ like the communities and the economies, particularly to them. So we can like adjust, like, we have the same base layer design, but we have to like make sure that the details are like fit into the puzzle piece with like each individual community. So I think that feedback loop, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like one really interesting thing to note is that we are in an, a world where we sort of like often in Web3 think, oh, like this is the first time we've like had a movement where there's like been like any kind of regenerative discussion or like climate discussion, like these things have existed before, but the difference is that we actually have these kinds of shared currency and like these ways of actually taking action that didn't exist before, or if they did exist, were just extremely cumbersome to actually implement. Like you'd have to go to like a, a grant, you know, program and wait six months for a response or like a year for a response and maybe you'd get $50,000 to do your thing. Whereas now it's much more permissionless. You can get involved and like use any of these mechanisms or, or even build your own mechanisms to do this. Um, I know Panvala and Neuron's here and like they're doing amazing work on like letting people even create sort of their own like shared communities and shared currencies. And to me that is fundamentally just a, a game changer in the way that we're doing this work. Um, so I, yeah, I really hope that quadratic funding is just one kind of Lego block and the eventual sort of set of tools that people have to be able to create um, their own sort of, you know, funding sources for, for these, these movements. And I'll just quickly add, I think it's, I think it's the movement towards an open source economies, right? Where you can, you have these building blocks and you can take the pieces and the instructions are very easily accessible and the technology is light enough and it can work on mobile and it can do this and it can do that. And really all it is is a rejigging and a redesign of what's been calcified for so long. You're literally taking something and you're smashing through that so that you allow flows to flow differently. You allow value to flow in a different way. And let's remember that the monetary system, like it, we talk about sustainability till the cows come home. The monetary system as it is will always trump that and will prevent it. There is no, that in itself, the way it is designed, it will always stop anything sustainable. Infinite growth does not exist. It is a fallacy, it is stupid. So at this point, because we have this, these tools to break that, fix that, redesign this, change that, give and empower people with this tooling, with the vision, with examples to take and then adapt and implement in their communities. That's the game changer. That's the thing. And this is an opportunity for us all to do that, shake shit up, because it's about time. Like, honestly, I'm kind of bored with the way things are. <laughs> yeah, I would say to that, like, quickly as well, like, I would say it's like new type of thinking, like reimagining, like radically reimagining how we think, decentralizing innovation so that everyone can put uh, their own mechanisms or what they value within the innovations that we each give to communities. I think those are like, yeah, super valuable. I, 
I, I want to dig into that, but I know we don't have, have too much time. Um, I, I think it's interesting because there's, even among like this group who like, we've had many discussions about this, but there's like, there's very like, there's diverging opinions on many things, but like a common aligned goal, um, like a di di diverging opinions and also, you know, diverging approaches, um, whether it's just like for our own personal opinions, but also like some of the organizations that we're affiliated with. Um, and I think that's super important to actually nurture that. I think it's important that we have like dissenting opinions and we have the ability to have like, you know, conflicting approaches, maybe not conflicting, but like just understand that we're, we shouldn't all be thinking the same way about this, like bring in as many diverse, you know, perspectives on this and like many diver, diverse approaches to say like, hey, I think you're wrong, but I think we're going to the same output. Not saying that we, I think that we were wrong because we, we love Gitcoin, we do a lot of work with them. But um, I think it's, uh, it's interesting in Ali, you mentioned this need to essentially allow the freedom for people to diverge mm -hmm. on the implementations and the approaches that they take to what I believe is a very clear shared goal in terms of furthering public goods, commons, um, impact, uh, but also coming together and almost like battle testing and sharing the, the learnings every kind of like three or four months or you know, in venues such as this, which is I think a lot of what we're trying to accomplish with things like Shelling Point and Fund of the Commons, um, how can we have a, almost a check-in to push forward like our thinking to be able to say that we're taking different approaches or we're taking some of the same approaches, but we need to have almost like a more distributed um, you know, approach to it. Um, how many more times can I use approach in this sentence? Um, but I think that's super important. I think Ali, you made that, you made that great point. Um, so with that, I guess like my, my final thought is, you know, Simone, I think you summed it up very well about like what does like a regen alliance actually mean in, um, in, in practice? And I'll, I'll, I'll throw it over to you because you had a very good way of saying this. Um, and I want everybody's reactions here. So <clears throat> like I mentioned, it, it's not a formal thing, right? It's that thread that links us together and keeps us together. And it becomes stronger the more we have these check-ins and this opportunity to have discussion and this opportunity to really become comfortable in the gradient, in the nuance. Because again, one of the things that we've been used to is like a yes, no. It's this or that. No, it, the, the uh, innovation and creativity and pro, I guess evolution exists in the gradient, in the nuance. And that is what is all of these conversations, whether they're contradictory, whether we argue, whether we like have heated conversations, that's what it does. It brings gradient, it brings nuance, it brings the opportunity to, number one, be comfortable in ambiguity and thrive on it. And that ability to, again, recognize the fact that we all want the same thing and how we get there, you know, is the result of all of our different types of work, all of our different opinions, all of our different um, ways of looking at the world. I would maybe add, I think, so it's not a formal thing. The Regen Alliance is not like a thing that like is, is you know, going to be, there's not going to be a big announcement. There's not going to be a, it's just a thing that's that's out there in the world. And it's we might make like t-shirts at some point. The, <laughs> we got to get those, we will wear them for the next, the next panel. Um, I think that it's important though to create, uh, not, not to reuse shelling point again, but like I think to create just some kind of way for people to like come around kind of, uh, you know, campfire and like share their values, tell their stories. Um, and in a way that hopefully does lead to these sorts of divergent opinions coming together and finding some kind of common ground. And I think maybe my like call to action for, for folks that are listening would just be, if you have a project, and, like just think about how are you making an impact? What is the impact you're actually trying to achieve? How are you measuring that impact? And then reach out. I mean, just any of us are, we're all on Twitter. Everyone's probably too, too much on Twitter. Um, but yeah, just reach out and get involved. Yeah, I would say the same concept of like, how we, f we actually need to do a lot of fixing in the world to actually get to where we want to do, or a lot of creating new, new concepts and new things. So there's a lot of things we have to do, but we don't need to do all of them, each of us. So that's the concept of like, yeah, just each of us tailoring to our own individual expertise and thing that we can do best, but knowing that we're part of this like, collective group that we can always come back and converge with other groups and share learnings, share inspirations, share feedback, yeah. and then like build together um, individual individually and then coming into groups, making sure that we tackle every aspect of things we need to tackle. 
um, but us collectively. I agree with all that. I think my very tactical wrap, wrap up here would be um, with this idea of like mixing, mixing um, of like different opinions and approaches, I would kind of, uh, my call to action for everybody here would be go talk to three or four people at the conference that you um, have not spoken with yet. Um, I think there's a lot of really, really cool um, organizations, people's perspectives. Um, and the, the whole purpose that we tried to get this event going for was like, how can we get a hallway track where we just have unofficial co conversations and like in inspiration from the talks and like the great speakers we have here are carried in to these private conversations where I think like bonds are formed and we've seen this um, where, you know, meetings in hallways or meetings in the chat section of our previous virtual events have evolved into projects that have now made tangible impact every three months that we do fund in the commons. So that would be my call to action. Have a conversation, ask somebody like, what is it that you need um, to push your work forward in the public good space? And then see if you can match with somebody else or see if you can match them yourself. All right, cool.